Hello everybody, Joe here with Garden of Bluma. I am in the Phoenix, Arizona area, growing zone 9B. And I'm out in the backyard, it is early March, so I just wanted to take you around a little bit, walk around the backyard, show you what's been going on lately, and talk a little bit about what I've been doing this spring or late winter, in hopes to kind of help you guys to know what you should be doing, should have already done, that type of thing. So here is my Bradenton Loquat here. This thing has been in full bloom this past winter and a lot of fruit set here you can see some here and this is just everywhere so I'm gonna have a really good crop of loquats this year so I'm excited about that and right now you guys should be starting to feed your trees definitely um, I also like to give the loquats a little bit of Epsom salt when it starts getting warmer but yeah start feeding your trees right now if you haven't already a lot of your trees are starting to flush out growth and things now, bloom, so they need that food to really have that energy to do all that kind of stuff. My Tikal Sapodilla here looks pretty nice still. I did not cover really much of my tropicals this year. This winter was a little bit warmer in the fact that we didn't get those extreme cold nights, you know, those. 20 degree nights a whole lot of those this year but I mean we were consistently in the 30s at night so I wouldn't say it was like super out of the ordinary warm we had enough chill for like the stone fruit types of trees and things like that but it was really good winter as far as not getting extreme cold to really do any damage to tropicals and things like that unless you have really really sensitive or ultra tropicals but here's my Tikal Sapodilla. I have one fruit set on here. Let me see if I can find it for you guys. There it is. So hopefully that hangs on there. A feeding, watering should start picking up right now. My Silas Wood Sapodilla there again, not protected in a container throughout the winter, did fine. A couple weeks ago, I really aggressively pruned some of my tropicals, like my guavas. So I cut this way back. This is my Indonesian seedless guava. So if you haven't done that yet with your tropicals, there's still some time to really hack back your tropicals. The guavas grow on the new growth. So it's a good idea to really prune those back. And they are pretty aggressive growers here anyways. It's not gonna hurt anything to cut it back pretty significantly. Here's one of my canistels. Got the loquat seedling there with my wax jambu. Blackberries are really flushing out a lot of growth right now. This is the Rosboro variety. Subel white sapote here. And this has been flowering a lot. So I don't know if it'll set any fruit or not this year. I mean, it's old enough, but it's really small. As you can see, it's just more of like a four to five foot bush here. Jabba de Kaba, red hybrid there. And this is one of the things that really suffered through the winter and I knew it would. Uh, this is my soursop. It's completely bare right now. I've pruned it back a bit some of the dead stuff that I know is actually dead. It's still green, the trunk, when you scratch it. So I believe it's still alive, but hasn't flushed out any leaves. So I don't know, I don't know if this will make it or not. Um, I knew this would struggle. It does not like temps below 40. And typically I've brought it in because it's been in a container but I've just been to the point now where I'm kind of tired of moving all these containers around. You know, I have some back issues and various things. So I don't know if this would ever even fruit here anyways. It was more experimental, but I've had it for four years grown from seed. And as long as you bring these inside or in a warm place on those really chilly nights, it'll grow here. As far as getting fruit, that's a whole nother thing. So we'll see what happens. I'm just gonna leave it here for now. Uh, peach tree, should have pruned all your stone fruits back by now. 
I really aggressively pruned this peach tree back this year and it's fruiting now. The cherry plum is blossoming right now as well and I also pruned that back pretty aggressive. Let's sneak back behind here. And jujube is finally starting to leaf out here. Uh, let's see if I can get a little closer for you. There you go, you can see some of the shoots going on. And this is the first year that I tried some grafting. So I have, you can see a graft there. I think I grafted about five honey jar varieties to this. And the reason for that is, is the Sherwood on its own doesn't quite produce as heavily as I'd like. And so I'm hoping grafting another variety onto it really can increase the production on this tree because I really love the taste of the Sherwood Jujubees. I just don't get as much as like, I know like the Lee variety is really aggressive in how it produces. So I'm hoping that having a second variety onto it, if some of these grafts take, which I hope they do, will help the production of this tree. And I really cut this back quite a bit as well. I mean, this thing was getting really tall, uh, but the jujube will grow pretty vigorously so you don't have to worry about it when you cut it. Pomegranate's starting to flush out here. Citrus there, my car, car, navel, they're all starting to bloom and put out a lot of growth. This is my one of my Adamoy is the one I have in the ground here from Seed and African Pride. And I cut this back pretty good too. All my guavas and Adamoyas, I really cut back. Sugar apple as well, I'll show you. And I'm starting to see some budding out on this. My raised bed gardens here. I have tomatoes in here going on. And I got a really early start on these this year. So I planted these like the first week in February because the weather indicated that it was going to be pretty warm the rest of February. So I was like, okay, I'll give it a shot. I knew that there was a chance that we'd get cold and we probably would. And we did a few nights. So I was kind of concerned, but they all look green, healthy, and look like they pushed through any of those cold nights that we had. And we're starting to get pretty warm now. So. I have early, early girl, which is something I always do. I like that variety. It's really, you know, a versatile variety. It's proven to do really well here. Good, good for salad, good for salsa, good for pretty much just eating or whatever you want to do. So I always typically do that variety, but I also have sweet 100 and that's the first I've ever done that variety supposed to be a highly productive cherry type tomato and then i have a sun gold which is an orange tomato more of like a cherry type tomato variety as well so those are two new varieties that i'm trying i like to experiment with a few new varieties every year i tend to like to do more of the cherry tomatoes or the little smaller tomatoes for the kids and stuff and they're just good for snacking got a hummingbird flying around here <laughs> checking out the dill over there so yeah i like to do a couple of the more cherry tomatoes those sweet tomatoes for the kids and stuff to snack on i've done last year i did yellow pear which turned out really good and i like the black cherry tomatoes i've done so a lot of different varieties i've tried over the years i have some beans i've planted in here that haven't quite come up yet my watermelons will be over here crimson sweet i'm trying this year which is different i've been doing the desert king for the last three years that has been really productive which is an orange flesh variety but i want to try some different things this year a dill <laughs> a monster there from the winter that i've just left My mandarin here, tango, flushing out, flowering. I have my Barbie pink guava here, which I think I finally got in the spot that I want it. Got a little beat up from the winter, but not too bad. And I've pruned this back. Has a few fruits on it. 
So that's another thing. If you are growing fruit trees in containers, especially the tropicals, now is the time to figure out where you want to position them for the summer months. You don't want them in full blazing sun all summer long. So I've been adjusting where I put my container fruit trees right now, where I want them positioned for the summer. I'm not gonna walk back there, but there's my Barbados cherry back in the corner. Nothing really too major going on with that right now. I have melons here. I forget the name of the variety I'm doing. It's um, a honey melon though, that I'm gonna try to grow in this container and hope that it just sprawls out over in here. So it's more of like a cantaloupe. Mulberry has flushed out. And again, I aggressively prune this tree to keep it about 10 feet high and grow it more like a bush. But if you look at this, look at a branch here i mean you can just see how absolutely loaded this thing gets with mulberries so this is a highly productive tree here and it's great because you can keep it maintained especially this this is a dwarf mulberry to the size you want it i mean i have it wedged in there's a large ash tree right here a guava next to it so it's just like wedged in here, but I can keep it manageable by pruning it aggressively a couple times a year. And it just produces like abundantly. But you could also, these want to get like large trees. So if you have a lot of room, you can allow these to grow pretty big as well if you want for shade or whatever. Peruvian white guava. So you can see how much I took off of this tree. I haven't cleaned it up yet. But I took a ton off of this tree. Usually the frost kind of naturally helps me prune this back. It usually kills about a third of the tree. So it makes it easy for me to know where to prune and everything. But this year there was no frost damage at all on it but I aggressively prune this back. It's about, still about, I don't know, eight feet, nine feet. But this thing got really big. I mean, it was probably about 12, 13 feet, which is pretty good size to see a guava tree that big here. I think it's got one or two fruits on it from the spring, or from the winter still but it's getting ready to put out a lot of new growth as well. Here's my Jamaican cherry tree. And this was one I was kind of concerned about. This is one that's pretty sensitive, like the soursop. It doesn't really like those colder temps when you start getting below like 35 degrees. But I left it here in the container and it does have still a lot of growth on it. And I really cut it back as well. Not as aggressively as last year. I think I did a video last year where you can see where I cut. I mean, it was only like three feet up there or something, but I left a little bit more growth on it this year. But I think it's going to be fine. I mean, you can see a lot of the leaves there and stuff, so should bounce back. I built this little raised bed box here for some more melons. I'm doing another type of watermelon back here that I'm hoping to just sprawl out here. Maybe, as you can see, I was starting to build like a little trellis for it and stuff. So we'll see how that turns out. I believe it's called, I want to say Art House Watermelon. It was growing native to Arizona, supposedly. So we'll see how that does. And forgive me for the mess back here. My kids have been kind of playing around and making a mess, but Here's my other African Pride Atamoya here. And I also cut this back quite a bit, as you can see. Keep it manageable in a container. And with these Anonas, the Atamoyas, the sugar apples, a lot of the blossoming and flowering comes on the new growth. So you wanna prune it back anyways to get a lot of those new shoots and to increase flower production. So I'm already seeing some new buds on this as well.
All right, coming along here, I repositioned all my figs here, hacked them all back quite a bit. They're all pushing out new growth. You can see my mangoes back here. I'm not seeing any flower buds on the item rock here, the seedling mango tree, which is my largest tree. And it did flower for the first time last year, I talked about, and fruited. But I'm not seeing anything as of yet, so hopefully it'll still flower. My sugar apple is wedged back in there, bare right now, and hacked back quite a bit. That thing got really massive in the container. And so, yeah, I aggressively pruned that. I haven't seen any new growth on it yet, so I'm hoping it'll be okay. And you can see all my other mangoes. I have the Gary there, the carry in the container. I've also moved back in here with the other mangoes, which is flowering quite a bit. And my kit mango right here in front. Another my one of my projects right now that I'm trying to do is get my watering system all squared away and good to go. You want to check all your bubblers make sure they aren't clogged, make sure they're all running properly, spaced where you want them. I do a drip line system I did a video on before if you wanna check out for all my container fruit trees. And so since I've moved a lot of my containers around, I'm gonna to have to rework that a bit. So that's my next project I've been doing. This is a great time to be doing all your gardening projects out here in the Phoenix, Arizona area. The weather's beautiful from January to you know April is when you wanna get all that stuff done before those really extreme hot temps start kicking in. Or doing your trellises, doing those raised beds. Right now your garden should be all planted up with what you're doing, your tomatoes, your beans, you know, whatever that may be, melons. All those sh seeds should be in the ground. All those transplants should be there. So you should be good to go with all that. You should start Increasing the watering slightly. I mean not too crazy and you know, making sure you're starting to feed all your stuff your fruit trees should be fed And get all those projects done, you know, make sure your water lines are all good to go and ready Have fun and enjoy gardening and getting ready for our extreme heat Check me out at gardenofluma.com for more tips on gardening and growing fruit trees, especially in hot dry climates. Thanks for watching